Hey guys, it's your best. <clears throat> that was loud, right? Is that loud? Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey guys. Hey, hey guys, it's your best boxing friends. I'm Kelsey. This is Rachel. Rachel, I wanted to read you a quote from Tyson Fury, who was on E60 with uh, Jeremy Shep, uh, talking about mental health. It doesn't get any darker than not wanting to live, Fury told Shep. That's as dark as it can go, I suppose, and that's where I was at in my life. I prayed to God to kill me. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd say, why did I wake up again? Why am I back in this place and I don't want to be? That's Tyson Fury, the lineal heavyweight champion of the world today. Uh, Fury's made a remarkable comeback in his life and in his career. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that space because it's not something a lot of people talk about. And so both you and I have been in that space that Tyson Fury was in. No, we weren't former heavyweight champions of the world. But we were in places where we were praying for God to kill us. Not maybe together, but individually we were always waking up and asking God, why am I still alive? What do you have for me here? God's like, what's the point of all this? Please kill me. I don't know how many times, because I'm bipolar and I have some other issues, and like I can just kill me, kill me, kill me, you know, that kind of thing. And I know that if you wanted to share a little bit about your experience with that as well, I think it would be. Yeah, when, I, when you read the quote, um... It, it did remind me of your experience, because uh, you had shared with me, you know, um, almost like being in that same situation of, of praying God. And at first, I didn't think it applied to me as much. So I knew that I'd struggled with depression. And, but then I thought back, and I was like, oh, so I didn't use those words exactly. Right. But I have said things to myself, like, why am I still alive? So, like, my words were are, were a little bit different. Um, yeah, but a similar subject and similar feeling, I think. Maybe your behavior, the thing that you chose to do with the feeling was a little Or different. I would say, I don't want to be alive anymore. Uh, uh, and so I recognize, like, I recognize that now, that it's not, like, a, a healthy or helpful thing for me to dwell in. It's definitely. Uh, that kind of self-talk. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's definitely not a healthy thing. But it's not a thing that you should feel ashamed about. Right. If you're out there and you have similar thoughts or have had similar thoughts in your life, you're not alone. Um, so I wanted to make this video about that just to say like, hey, here's two people, random people on the internet who have experienced similar things. And uh, But when you're in that situation, even if you're uh, comparatively rich and famous like Tyson Fury, even if you're the heavyweight champion of the world, you'll feel alone. Um, so I guess yeah. I wanted to share just some of the, yeah. some of that, um, for anybody out there who feels that way, but also to know that there's hope, right? There's people who have been in that position before. Well, and that your hope's not dependent on outside circumstances. So like right. the story I would make up about somebody like Tyson Fury, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. would be, Hey, you're a boxing champion. You're, um, a gypsy. So the story I make up is that you've got people all around you. Okay. And not only do you have like fans and all this, but then you also have what I would think would be like lots of family because that's what I make up about uh, gypsies Irish yeah. <laughs> and Irish travelers is that you have all kinds of people around you. And so what I would have done is compared that to my own life and been like, see, I don't have any of that. So I feel this way because I don't have any of that. Um, I heard somebody else share another story where they were walking through the mall and they saw a Kate Spade purse. And when they saw it, they looked at it and saw it was Kate Spade and they had the thought to themselves, you know, it must be nice to have like a great life and you make these things and you have lots of money and everything's like perfect for you. And then like the next day learn that Kate Spade uh, took her own life. Yeah. So, like, it, I guess, like, you know, Tyson Fury, I don't know if he's talked about, like, his recovery and where, like, hope came from and stuff, but, like, it's not coming from those outside circumstances. So, whether you have lots of people around you, you don't have anybody around you, you have lots of money or no money, like, that's not the stuff that's going to keep you out of depression yeah. and uh, suicidal thoughts. It's easy to fall in the trap, I think, of trying to use the exterior to battle things that happen on the interior. And we see this in our society all over the place. 
um, whether it's through drugs or pornography or shopping or whatever thing that people can get into and get too much into and get addicted to, they'll try to battle things. So, but when you're on your last, on your last rope, like you're down to your last straw and you feel like you want to kill yourself, again, it's completely normal, I think, to think that exteriorly things, if things were different, I would feel different. Mm -hmm. um, but it's probably not true, just given evidence by people like Kate Spade, people like Tyson Fury and other people who have right. suffered with this throughout history. So I know that in my own recovery from being in a really dark place is that interiorly my life had to change. Um, and how I got there was by opening myself up to the possibility that my mind is not me. For me, like ultimately what it came down to was that when I identified with my mind, my thoughts but my thoughts aren't really me i've learned that since in recovery i've read a lot of books i've done a lot of hard work i'm in 12-step programs um but i'm saying that and i also had the intervention of my higher power who came into my life in a very real and present way um, but everything that even that situation taught me was that the interior is what's important and it's how we can get out of a situation like that. There are all sorts of resources available to people. There's 12-step programs. There's other kinds of programs that are similar to that. Um, there are mental health facilities. You're, um, there's just all sorts of, there's all sorts of people out there who struggle um, with this type of ailment, if you want to call it. You can think it's a mental issue. You can think it's a spiritual issue. Whatever you want to call it, it's just a label, but it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and so when Kelsey says like, you know, that, uh, he was not like his mind or his thoughts. And so one of the things that you learn in recovery is that feelings come and go and thoughts come and go. And yeah. so if you, we don't have control over those things, um, you can like, you know, try to intentionally like have a feeling or I can intentionally think, but I don't know. I always have an example, like sometimes thoughts come into my head that are insane. Um, like whether it be like, sometimes I'm driving and I'm like, well, what if I, you know, went this way off the overpass yeah. and I'm like, I'm not going to do that. But like, that was a thought that came into my head, yeah. but that thought is not me. Right. And so like I can be, and so if that thought's not me, then it means like all my thoughts yeah. are not me either. And so like who, then my question was, I was like, well, who am I? Who am I? <laughs> uh, and for myself, I've had to do a lot of thought, you know, spend time thinking about that and where does my worth come from? Because my, you know, what led to my depression and where I ended up is that when all my extenuating circumstances, the exterior got really bad, I had nothing else because I didn't think that I had any value or worth. And then what was, what was I doing here if I didn't, you know, if everything sucked around me and I didn't have any value or worth, like, what am I doing here? And so my journey has been trying to learn, like, where do I get my worth? And that's where, like, the idea of a higher power comes in. Um, and that's what has helped me to continue to move forward is uh, believing that there is a higher power that has given me, like, inherent worth. Uh, it's not dependent on me or my outside circumstances. Yeah, and then also I think that it requires a paradigm change, so a change of the lens, if you will, a viewpoint change as to what life is. I used to think, like I spent so much of my life not improving or learning or changing, not with that mindset. And the reality of life really is that I'm always learning and growing and changing, right? And so life is not a destination, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And so if, you, if I'm able to constantly remind myself that whenever invariably setbacks or difficult situations emerge or even like heartbreaking things happen, that event isn't, doesn't define me or my life even. It's just part of my journey towards becoming whatever it is that I become, you know? And that can be, that's a two-edged sword, so it's, yeah, it applies to difficult things too, but it also applies to good things, right? Um, so e it's so easy to get kind of locked in on desires and outcomes that we want. Um, but I know from my personal experience, you know, I'm not Tyson Fury. I was never a heavyweight champion of the world, but I did reach a place in my life where I was really happy with 
things that I achieved and um, thought more of these things than probably I should have. And so I identified with these outcomes when really like they're not, they don't define me, nothing defines me. Um, so I just think it takes growth. It takes patience. I know that people, I know from my own experience of suffering with this, and I know I can probably speak for you on this too, that a lot of our interior battles have to do with how we talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. How compassionate are you with yourself, right? Um, that's important. I had very negative self-talk, and it doesn't matter the reason. Maybe you created it. Maybe a parent or a loved one did that to you when you were uh, young and you learned that. It doesn't matter. What does matter is identifying in it identifying it and taking responsibility for the situation and it can start every moment and every day. I just really think it's important to talk about these things that other people don't talk about. I'm so happy that Tyson Fury um, was able to come back. I mean, people universally seem to love Tyson Fury. Um, and I think that, I think that um, it would have been a real shame to lose Tyson Fury to this um, awful ailment or situation um, and I'm so glad that whatever happened in his life to change his life did change. You can see a lot in boxing, this happens in boxing, and how boxing saves people. We have this um, idea of boxing being a big savior in people's lives. It saves people from poverty. It saves people from the street. Um, the story I make up about that is because boxing provides an order to their life. It provides a discipline that otherwise wouldn't be there. It, I was talking to Lou Sabris, a former heavyweight contender who's fought a lot of really great heavyweight champions in his day. And he told me kind of my own experience as well. We talked about boxing. Like, I'm not a boxer, but I've done some boxing, right? And so I know. And I told him what I liked was how peaceful it was. And he said the same thing. So what all that to say to you that you don't have to be in boxing to experience that kind of thing. It doesn't have to be any kind of boxing at all. But you can find something that gives your life peace and order and brings you to the present moment. You can do that. People do that with meditation. People do that with uh, religious activities. Whatever it is that floats your boat is there to help you. And so I just wanted to talk about that. I'm really happy to see Tyson Fury. Some people call him the lineal heavyweight champion of the world. I call him the lineal mental health champion because he's come back from a place not a lot of people do statistically. Mm -hmm. um, but statistics don't matter to the individual. If you're a person out there who suffers with... Uh, these kind of issues, know that you're not alone. Know that we love you, that you're our best boxing friends. You can always reach out to Kelsey McCarson. Um, my email's out there, I'm on Twitter. However you wanna contact me, if you struggle with that, talk to me about it, I'll talk to you about it, and I'm sure Rachel would too. Mm -hmm. We love you, thanks for watching. If you wanna like, comment, and subscribe, that helps the channel grow, and we appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Kelsey, this is Rachel, and we are Real Talk with Kelsey and Rachel. Sometimes we're the show that forgets its name. Thank <laughs> you.